Okay, today we continue with our class uh, Hilchas Talmud Torah, and we start with uh, with what with Sefer Shmiras Halashon, and the topic is uh, breaking bad habits. Okay, <clears throat> it says in truth there is no basis for a con uh, contention that the average person cannot avoid forbidden speech uh, for more than a day or two. It is proven uh, proven fact that uh, the longer one persists in guarding his tongue, the easier it becomes. So, like in in every other, in everything in our lives, so uh, it says that, that uh, if, if you have training, right? If you've been doing some some things, whatever is it, like for a long time, you, you become accustomed to it. It's not like uh, foreign uh, to you. And uh, you see that people are skilled people; they uh, they they very proficient with their hands. Right, same, same, same is here, you just train yourself. The gossip is a habit, <clears throat> and habits, uh, as time goes on, become part of the person nature. Right, so, as we know, right? But bad habits can be broken, especially when one becomes aware of given habits involve numerous of Torah prohibitions, as described by our sages, uh, the most severe terms. So habits are habits. Uh, I, I guess uh, the good example would be smoking, right? A person, yeah, he, he heard that uh, smoking is not good, but he, when, when he sees on x-ray that it's uh, not only not good, it's very, very bad in his situation. So uh, even though it's bad habit and he said, I cannot quit, but now he, he would be able to quit or die. So same is here. If we know the consequences of our actions and I just watched this movie, Gay gnome, right? Uh, maybe another time, so you like you'll stop. Okay. <clears throat> such as such awareness, uh, coupled with a bit of uh, zealousness, goes a long way. Uh, one who would uh, speak whatever came to his mind, <laughs> without m m momentous uh, hesitation, will now find himself weighing his words before expressing expressing them. So as we said, many many words are useless anyway. So now when when person speaks, uh, so that's uh, and um, <clears throat> right. So now now the person would think like should should I say it? Is it how is it important this information? Maybe it's not so important. Uh, one should not um, not grow frustrated if after the <clears throat> after he resolved to avoid forbidden speech, his evil inclination got, uh, got the better of him. And he spoke Loshan Haram. So it's actually not, not only in this, but in general, in all of the mitzvahs. So a person is working on himself. On, um, and uh, um, and something is not, I mean, uh, if a person is working on, on himself. And, uh, and false, right, has happened. So it does not mean that, that he fails. It just means that he fell one time. Even if he happens that time again, nevertheless, he should not despair. So, I mean, it's it's very hard uh, um, <clears throat> habit to, to, to break. So, we'll stumble, we'll stumble. Rather, he should uh, forever strengthen himself to avoid improper speech and uh, uh, persevere. This is how one should uh, conduct himself his entire life. This is the intent of the Talmud statement. One should forever arouse uh, his good inclination to subdue his evil inclination. It's from uh, Brachas 5a. So one more time, one should forever arouse his good inclination. So good inclination that, that you, you, you you know the, about reward and punishment. So your intellect to subdue your evil inclination, your physicality. Um, this is ongoing struggle with one evil inclination, exactly. One must forever be po poised to battle and never discouraged by the failure. Just because you, you fail, like, like as our rabbis say, be, be like a fly. Learn, learn from the fly. So a fly, you shoot it 1,000 times, comes back. You're angry, you, 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 you try to kill it, doesn't matter how you, right? It comes back. So be, learn from the fly. Um, <clears throat> always uh, to persist. Okay. This knowledge of what the Torah requires and the proper resolve, our efforts will ultimately succeed. Okay, so one second, let me see. I'm not sure with everybody, 
but uh, I'm not sure. It's very strange. All right. So, but whoever wanted to join, I guess join. <coughs> okay. So continue. <coughs> so the plan is today, Bezras Hashem, finish uh, this section. <coughs> so we're in, uh, we're in chapter seven. Right, I just make sure that it's last chapter. Yes, it's chapter number seven. Um, <coughs> and the Hilchas Talmud Torah. So we um, <coughs> we're talking about details of the ostracism, right? All all these people that we try and to, to affect to to pressure them, like uh, so, social pr pressure, that they would, they would change their conduct. Okay. So, halacha number seven. <clears throat> How many people are necessary to release a person from the ban of ostracism or excommunication? Okay. So, the answer is three. They may, uh, may even be commoners. A single judge with a unique expertise may release a person from a ban of ostracism. Or excommunication alone. A student may release a person from a ban of ostracism or excommunication, even if the place in even place of his teacher. So it's a lot of commentaries on this. So we're going to go one more time with all of the commentaries and we try to explain. <clears throat> okay, so. So the question is, so I, I always had a question, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see uh, the answer, but uh, why would all of these laws be in this section? So we were learning, uh, the old topic is uh, Hilchas Talmud Torah, the laws of learning of the Torah. What, is it, what is this has to do with the learning of the Torah? So it's my, my personal answer. I don't know if it's true or not, I'm not sure. But uh, maybe it's one of the answers <clears throat> that because the person did not learn Torah enough, he would behave like that. So all of these uh, 24 uh, uh, type of people who, who are under, under this, uh, who would fall under this, uh, this uh, ban of ostracism or excommunication. So because they did not learn uh, Torah enough or they do not respect Torah enough. Uh, for, for example, I, uh, just a uh, uh, random example. So it says a person who takes uh, God's name in vain and takes the oath casually. So if he would knew, knew the consequences of this, he would not do that. So that's, that's my guess. Okay, continue. <clears throat> How many people are necessary to release a person from a ban of ostracism or, of, or excommunication? Three. 38 commentary. The phraseology used uh, in Subheading 68a, uh, which mentioned uh, <clears throat> the release of Rabbi uh, Eliezer Ben Horkonus, from the, uh, his ban upon his death. His ban upon his death. Uh, the Rambam uh, learns that uh, releasing a person from the ban of ostracism is comparable to release of vows. As explained in Hilka Shvuas uh, 6 5, uh, the latter procedure requires three judges. So, for example, um, somebody made a vow. And then later on, he realized that he cannot keep this vow. Well, what way is it? He or she doesn't matter. Okay, but well, let's talk about the guy. It's e like e easy, easy procedure, <clears throat> right? So, so now he has to get uh, in front of three judges, and they can be a common people, like regular Jews, right? Not uh, like, sh of course, Shomer Shabbos is Jews, and uh, and uh, there is a special formula in our Siddur, so you would uh, you you would read and they would answer you that uh, so you 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 would say that if I would know that uh, this uh, wow would be so difficult for me I would never never wow to to do that you understand so and uh, it, it could be three judges or one uh, one big uh, hacham or uh, or three common people right <clears throat> three kosher people so same same is here th so these uh, three people. It, in some sense, it's like a based in. Of course, they they cannot decide like monetary issue. That's that's out of the question. Uh, or they uh, they ca they cannot decide this. Uh, I don't know, who, like marriage issue gets. That's that's too much. But simple issue like uh, to remove somebody from excommunication, as we said uh, last time. If person change his ways, yeah, we can remove them uh, from excommunication, uh, from from the ban. Okay. 
So continue. They may even be commoners. 39. The Lacha Mishneh notes that the people who release the person from, from the ban need not to, to be of the same stature as the court who is imposed the ban. It's very interesting. We're going to explain. However, he qualifies that statement, allowing the leniency only after a person has already corrected his uh, behavior. So, so Lacha Mishneh says... so. Uh, a court, as, as we said uh, last time, a court would put uh, somebody on a ban, right? And uh, according to, to Lecha Mishnah, so three simple people can remove to, from, from the ban. But he qualified if he changed his character, if he's, uh, his behavior, right? So that's, uh, that's the only way. I'm not sure why he would, would he say so. So I, 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 I don't think uh, the court of three judges would remove him from the ban if he did not change his behavior. Okay, but very interesting. Continue. Also, this only applies when the ban was imposed because of the improper behavior and not because he spoke arrogantly to a scholar. So, to, arrogantly to a scholar, so nobody uh, like uh, except the court or a scholar himself can remove him from the ban. Right? So, people, uh, especially common people, they, they do, not, do not know the value of the scholar. I think it's uh, just a simple person. Which is not, and uh, as we said before, when you disrespect a true Torah scholar, God fearing Torah scholar, you you disrespect Shina, and has, Hashem said many times, "My honor, I'm going to forgive. On me, you can spit, you can step, right? I, I'm going to forgive you. But his honor, my 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 chosen person, my my Torah scholar, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to. That's uh, that's a scary thing." So let's see from the beginning. A single uh, judge uh, with unique expertise may release a person from the ban uh, of ostracism. Okay, so let's see. Mm, a single judge with expertise, so Becky, right? Um, so ca commentaries say uh, 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 who has studied both written and oral law can appreciate the motivating principle of the laws and compare uh, one case to another. See Rambam commentary to the Mishnah Sanhedrin 5 5. <clears throat> judge with unique expertise. So, <clears throat> uh, so we would expect, uh, right, uh, logically we would expect a judge with unique expertise, meaning that he is an expert in this field. So some rabbis are expert in, uh, let's say, in uh, weddings and divorces. Which is uh, it's not so simple. There is a uh, like separate field, right? Not uh, not everybody were, were trained in this field, and there are many nuances that uh, that you must know, right? Okay. So okay, and some judges uh, like or in uh, in bearing people like, uh, like other 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 rabbis uh, they have uh, different fields of expertise. But here, so we, we would think that he would be expert in this in this area. But looks like he, he's an expert in in general law. So since uh, we saw this, all of the 24 reasons why we put um, a person on the ban, it's like from all over the Torah. So here it says that he should be like uh, uh, who studied both written and oral Torah. So <laughs> so it's it's very sad situation. But some people uh, like to 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 learn only written law. Well, yeah, written. Written Torah, meaning Humash and uh, Novi and uh, writings, right? And they they know a lot of Moshe Rabbeinu, but they do not know how to, how to wash the hands before the bread and what to do if uh, and how to warm up the food on Shabbos. That's uh, right. That's uh, that's very interesting. But they can tell you all of the midrashim, right? So this uh, this person must be knowledgeable in written law. Right, because uh, many many laws are like exact. Whatever it says in Torah, you cannot change. And but uh, you, he must be all, also expert in oral law. <coughs> Continue. So oral law is halacha, basically. Talmud halacha. <coughs> Continue. Uh, so uh, actually, from the beginning, uh, the single judge of unique expertise may release a person from the ban of ostracism. So he's not a common person. He's he's one who learned. Right, Ben of Ostracism 41. In Hilcha Sanhedrin 211, Rambam states that the judge will, uh, with unique expertise, can adjudicate cases 
a requirement accord of three. So now we're talking about unique expertise. Now the RIM 8B states that such a license is granted with regard to release person from the ban of ostracism. So unique, uh, unique expertise. For example, he's a, uh, he he was trained rabbi and he has a smicha in um, in uh, what is it uh, in a cases of uh, in monetary cases. So in many many monetary cases, it, one person is enough. It's preferable three, but uh, one person, one rabbi, one qualified rabbi is enough, right? So person ban of ostracism or excommunication alone, so he can do it alone. Rav Kapach notes that many ancient manuscripts copied this of Mishnah Torah do not include these words. Okay, no problem. He maintains that the addition is a printer error. Okay. Okay. Continue. A student may release a person from the ban of ostracism or over excommunication, even in the place of his teacher. 43 commentary. Rabat maintains that generally the court uh, that releases a person from the ban must include the same number of the judges uh, as the one which imposed the ban, which is interesting. So if court of three imposed the ban, and now even uh, as we said before, this uh, commoners, uh, three commoner people <coughs> got, uh, got together. So one common person cannot, of course, uh, exclude so uh, i mean uh, at least that, that person from ben so it should be the same number at least uh, that way i see it. it's like a practical uh, practical thing you 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 show re respect to to the course so three you, you needed three rabbis to uh, to put this uh, to, to put this person on ben and only one spending to remove that's there's disrespect to the court okay however he suggests that this might apply only during the ban, okay. Uh, however, once uh, okay, so uh, right, so so Rabat said so uh, the same if um, if it's during the ban. So the regular ban, we said thirty days. So we give him thirty days to fix his act. Uh, so if he like change his uh, his behavior on the second day, so they say uh, they say have exactly like the same number according to Rabat. However, once the 30-day period of the ban is concluded, even a lesser number of judges may release him on the ban. So he's, uh, uh, they go deeper into details. Okay, 43. One second. Um, so, and the students can do it instead of his teacher. Okay, so Nidarim 8b explicitly state this leniency. Okay, so we're talking about not, not student of the, the first day, but... Uh, uh, every rabbi have uh, uh, has like some like closer students that he can trust uh, to take care of some some things, right? So okay, so I guess that they're talking about the this kind of student. Continue, <clears throat> number uh, number nine. When three individual issue a ban of ostracism and they depart, huh. uh, if a person who was ostracized improves his behavior. With regard to the matter for which he was ostracized, three others may come and release him from the ban. Okay, so it's very interesting. Um, so let's, uh, which is possible, right? So he he uh, in, insulted some people who were travelers in uh, uh, visitors in, in his town, so they, they went home. That is uh, very possible. Just one second. Okay, I'm, I'm going to skip this comment. It's uh, uh, this uh, this author, this uh, translator, trying to uh, to compare all of, all of these editions. So I'm going to skip. So continue. Uh, when the three individual issue a ban of ostracism and they depart, uh, commentary to a different place. Uh, if the person who was ostracized improved his behavior, so it's three different people with regard to the matter of for which he was ostracized, three others. Commentary. Even the uh, common people of a lesser statue, uh, as mentioned in the previous halacha. Three others. So, one second, forty-seven. Uh, three others may come and release him from the ban. So, I mean, in my mind, it's it's a logical. We 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 trying to 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 help a fellow Jew, and uh, he's um, he's in trouble. So we always try to keep the door open for for, for Teshuvah and not overpress the people. Um, so one one of the examples that, that that we just recently learned, 
I think it's a different. I, I don't. I don't think in our class. So uh, in different class. So so here's a good example. <clears throat> so if somebody stole the beam, wooden beam, from 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 another person, and now he built the house, and uh, uh, this beam is one of the beams of the house, and now he, the, the 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 thief wants to do the show. So if we so the halacha is like a biblical halacha is. If you stole from some some object from another person, so you must go and uh, return this object. Okay, you stole uh, I don't know whatever, uh, like not not money, but uh, like I don't know <clears throat> his wallet. Let's say even though it was empty wallet, but it new wallet, brand new wallet. So you stole from somebody. You have to bring, bring this wallet back, or you stole. Uh, he had the bricks. He, he wanted to, to build something, and you you you, you decided that you, you want to use these bricks for for something else. So you stole these bricks. So you, so you must uh, bring these bricks back, right? But uh, in this case, uh, in the, in the case of the beam, maybe it's on the second floor, maybe on the first floor, but in the basement, like you like uh, maybe even if you, even if you remember, so you would need to like take apart the half of the house, right? So if you go by b biblical halacha, so rabbis knew that person would not never do going to do the shua. So they they decreed the leniency. Hashem. Uh, allowed our rabbis and he actually not allowed the only, he appointed our rabbis he said you know your generations better and you must like uh, put the fences around my Torah and uh, you, you must encourage people to come uh, closer to me whatever it works whatever needs needs to be done so one of the things it's uh, it's applied to social pressure as we as we are learning here uh, and here the leniency is so he can return the the, the monetary value of the beam. So if it's only like, I don't know, whatever, $10, 10 uh, for, for the beam, yeah, he's going to return. But take apart the whole house and uh, suffer, I don't know, so many thousands of dollars of, of, of damage, he's not going to do it. So it's very interesting. So that here is, is also, so why I was saying that, so even though like um, like these people left, maybe we will say, yeah, there will be rabbis, let's see, maybe they're going to come back in two weeks. No, no, we're not going to wait two weeks. The guy is uh, changed his behavior. Okay, so today we we assemble simple course, call court of the simple kosher people and we release him from the ban. Coming to, however, he does not improve his behavior. <laughs> the man must be absorbed for by all Jews, even a Nazi. So okay, so so we give him thirty days. It's very interesting, right? So if if he if he insists on being wicked. So now everybody have to like absorb. Very interesting. Very, I mean, it's very interesting, but I would say very sad as well. <laughs> Continue. Number 10. A person who does not know who placed him under the ban of ostracism should approach the Nazi uh, who may release him from the ban. Okay, that, that's the whole halal. So basically, um, as, as we learned before, it, it could be this uh, ban... Uh, uh, could be done by um, by individual scholar in some cases, right? But uh, by by a court also, whether in presence of that person or without presence, outside of the presence of that person, right? So and person like everybody knows that that he's in a band, but he does not know who plays him, right? So he can go to Nazi to the top person. Nine commentary. Uh, the commentary explains that this refers to a person who insulted the taller Torah scholar. Okay, so many, many, it was not in the court, I guess. However, when the ban was imposed uh, for other reasons, it can be lifted by others uh, if the person placed under the ban improves his behavior, as explained in previous halacha. So I'm, I'm not going, going to repeat, but uh, the Torah scholars a different story. Right? Separate uh, laws apply. Okay. Uh, so he should approach Nasi, who may release him from the ban. So commentary, um, who as stated chapter 6, halacha 13, is not bound by men of forces imposed to protect honor of other sages. Because why? Why? He's a Nazi, he's a, he's a top authority of the country. Right. Okay, continue. Halacha number 11. And it says, <clears throat> if a ban was issued conditionally, even if one imposes uh, that conditional ban on himself, it must be nullified. Therefore, ordinary inter uh, inter uh, interaction with the person is permitted. 
Okay, we're going to explain. If Torah uh, scholar issued a ban of ostracism against himself, even if he made the ban conditional on the consent of another person, <laughs> uh, and even if he issued a it because uh, of the matter which require ostracism, he may he may nullify the band himself. Okay, so let's try to understand what it all says here. Okay. <clears throat> so it says number 11 from the beginning with commentaries and we try to explain. Uh, if band was issued conditionally, commentary, there is a so and so will be ostracized if he does not uh, does the following. So if he does so, so he is going to be ostracized. If he hit his wife, let's say, they say he we are going to ostracize him. Okay, so we, we don't wait until he does it, but we, we put this ban, the uh, conditional ban, which is makes sense. We um, we warn this person of, uh, of consequences. Okay, so one more time, if ban was issued conditionally, even one imposed um, that conditional ban on himself, so, I mean, to, to strengthen himself, right? He said, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to be ostracized, okay? It must be nullified. So even like if they did not put him on a band, but conditional ban, so only if he does some action, uh, even then it must be nullified, which is very interesting. We're going to see why. Before ordinary, um, before ordinary inter interaction with a person is permitted. Before, right, so it must be nullified and only then, so even like the act never never took place, you have to understand, right? So, but before even interaction with other people, uh, we, we, somebody must nullify this ban, which is optional. Very interesting commentary. This law is um, derived from the following, as follows, Marcus 11b, so it's Talmud, teaches that Yehuda's <laughs> Yehuda promised to Yaakov concerning Binyamin in Bereshis 43.9 implied that Yehuda would be placed in ostracism if he did not bring Binyamin home. Right When he said, uh, um, give me Binyamin, let, let us go to Egypt, buy bread, otherwise the, the, the master from, from that uh, place would not go in to sell us. Okay, so he said, if I'm going to, not, not going to return, so I'm obligated to you in this life and the next. Okay. It's very interesting. Although Yehuda fulfilled the condition, meaning he brought the Benjamin back, our sages explained that he remains uh, remained in ostracism. Very interesting. Even in the spiritual um, spiritual realms, until Moshe prayed for him. Right? See Rashi Dvarim 33.7. So I mean, we're not going to go there, but uh, it's very interesting. So Moshe knew that the, the problem with Yehuda. So sometimes a, a person would say something, and uh, would not even uh, knowing or thinking about the consequences. That's what Yehuda, he was a, <laughs> a great scholar, very interesting. So Tassafos, um, on Marcus, uh, what is it, 11b uh, says, explained that uh, this principle applies only when, as the case of Yehuda, the person who issued the conditional ban does not have the power to fulfill the condition himself. We're going to read again. Explain that principle applies only uh, when the uh, when, uh, principle meaning that you have to nullify the ban applies only when, and in the case of Yehuda, the person who issued the conditional ban does not have the power to fulfill the condition himself. Meaning that, uh, like in, in this case, uh, Yehuda said, I'm going to bring it back. It's not up to you. You're going to bring him back or not? Like uh, it's uh, it's up to the the governor of, of that country, who y Yosef, right? Who, right? Uh, Viceroy, that uh, that he, whether he uh, would let Benjamin Goren or not. That's that's the thing. However, if he can fulfill if that condition, for example, a person who says, uh, "I may I be ost uh, may, may I be in ostracism if I do not pull Philin today." The ban does not take effect uh, if the condition fulfilled. So that's an amazing difference. That's a big difference. So if everything that depends on you, and you like uh, some people need need the push and need uh, like uh, the, the, this condition. So don't try it at home. But uh, there is a, such a thing that people actually swear 
right take a vow so they know if i'm going to uh, not going to keep the vow all of these bad things are going to happen to me so and uh, since the person is weak character that's what he needs right he needs some outside push to in order to continue okay what can we do that's uh, the reality so if it works for the person he can do it but talk to your rabbi before taking any vows right but but here so they say if it's up to you like like example, uh, if I'm not going to put filling today, I should be ostracized. And he did. Uh, and he did put no problem, no nullification needed. But if if it was as a case in Yehuda, not did not depend on him, then he need other people to release him from the ban, even though condition was fulfilled. Rabat and others com commentaries raise the, the question: Why did Yehuda, Yaakov, or any other of the brothers? Uh, leave the uh, um, above mentioned ban. Just so, so why didn't why didn't Yehuda right uh, Yehuda himself could right Yaakov or the other brothers or somebody else in the family his sons I guess right. <clears throat> Therefore, the narrative in Bereshis does not appear to imply that it was absorbed by Yosef and their brothers. Okay, the Tashbits explain that Yehuda's words implied only a ban of ostracism in a spiritual world, but not the ban in a simple sense. Okay. Therefore, it could not be nullified until it took effect. Nor were uh, Yehuda brother, Yehuda's brothers ab uh, obligated to absorb it. Okay. So if it's in a spiritual sense and it never took place, so that's why they did not have to nullify. Okay. Continue. It was 52. Um, continue. If Torah scholar issued a ban of ostracism against himself, so as we said, a person wants to like uh, to push himself, right, a ban against himself, even if he made that ban conditional on the consent of another person, conditional consent of another person. Uh, so let's see, fifty-three. Okay, continue on consent of another person, and even if uh, he issued uh, because of the matter in which requires ostracism, uh, he may nullify the ban himself. So we're talking about this Torah scholars and commentary is, um, Nadarim 7b states that the uh, scholar uh, may release the ban of ostracism he imposed by himself, based on the behavior of uh, Rabbi Zeira. Before the latter um, would issue such a ban against another person, he placed himself under the ban. Before he would uh, would release his colleague from the ban, he would leave the ban he imposed uh, imposed on himself. The Rambam explained that the scholar that uh, that has potential has this potential not only with regard to the bans of that nature, but even in the cases where it would be required uh, that such a ban is imposed. That's very very interesting thing. So this great Rabbi Zera, so he said, okay, I have to put this. Uh, ban on somebody else and uh, this person is going to suffer so maybe he does not deserve suffering maybe i am not i'm going to be insensitive to the person so you know what i'm going to do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to impose the ban upon myself right and it right impose on my, my, myself and and uh, at the end of that person's ban i'm going to remove ban from myself and i would be able to remove the ban from him that's uh, that's why he's a rabbi Zaira. Okay, um, the Rajba and uh, Rabaat and others suggest not to accept the latter point. Okay, no problem. Continue. So it says he may nullify the ban. Commentary Nadarim concludes uh, we do not say a person who is imposed cannot uh, release himself from jail. Right. So in in general we, we have this idea that uh, a person who is in jail cannot help himself. Right, so he needs somebody from outside the jail to I don't know, to talk to a lawyer, to talk to judges, to governors. I mean, to try to release him. Right, but here is a different story. Okay, continue. Number twelve. We're almost done, but let me check time. I hope we have enough time. Okay, Bizarat uh, Maybe I only need a few more minutes, but uh, I want to finish this book today. Okay. <clears throat> so, number 12, uh, whenever a person dreams 
that he was placed under the banner of ostracism, even if he knows who issued the ban, 10 people who are proficient in Torah law are required to release him from the ban. If he cannot find such a people in his immediate surroundings, he must join a parasa in search for them. So we, we stop here, we, we're going to into the, the commentary. So people ask about the, uh, the what is it, the, um, the dreams. So this is the dreams, is actually uh, the information in the dream is actually hal halakhically binding, as we see, that he ha he must take actions. It's very interesting. And all other things people dream of, relatives, these, they, hey, mo most, of, most of them, it's uh, not, uh, not true. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about it. If it can continue, like repeat three times, with exactly the same details, the same um, scenario, that's a different story. But many dreams are useless. But this one... Psh, once, but it's clear this uh, this subject that uh, you have to take it seriously. So one more time, whenever a person dreams uh, that he was uh, placed under the ban of ostracism, commentary uh, the Shailot Dvar Achav Gaon explained that this applies even when he, uh, when the ban was issued by a minor or slave. So meaning a minor or slave that they have no right to to put uh, anybody else on on, on the ban, right? So that's how, like this is message the way I, I see it. It's message from from Hashem. So you doing something wrong, and even in a dream, so uh, like person knows that he's doing something wrong. It's not like uh, it's new to him. I did not know halach. So if he dreamt that he was placed on ostracism, so on the banner of ostracism, meaning that something is is happening, right? So one more time the whole sentence, whether a person dreams uh, that he was placed under the ban of ostracism, even if he knows who issued the ban, 57, there is, uh, it is not sufficient for him to ask that person to release the ban. So that person, is, that's a force in the dream 7a. So the, that person is oh, like, what do you want from me? You, you have these dreams, you crazy person, just leave me alone. Right? So... So it has to go to the 10 people, right? 10 people who are proficient in the Torah law, commentary, who study Talmud, case of mission. So meaning uh, uh, the, 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 the people who just read the story is not uh, the, the, the people that you want to go to. So the Torah law are required, so 10 people proficient in Torah law are required to release him from that ban, 59. The circumstances imply that perhaps that person was banned by divine decree and exactly as we said like uh, pfft, so maybe like um, in, in, in the, uh, the, the way i see it's a situation it's my personal take right so people did not know the court did not know what what, what is going going on like uh, and this uh, this person was trying to keep something quiet and now he has a dream so hashem would say i know guess what my friend i know therefore such a ban is more severe than the ban is imposed by a person on uh, material plane, right? So I mean, uh, since it, it was from above, from from Hashem, so it's more it's it's more severe. This ban is more severe than a uh, ban that is um, uh, that that was issued by uh, by human beings. So by human beings, we said even one person can say if he's an expert. Three people, common people, court, like same court, different court. But here, only 10 people, and who, not simple people, the ones who uh, learn Talmud. Very interesting. The Emek uh, Hashelah, 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 I explained that the 10 are necessary because divine presence rests among the group of 10 or more. So that's a very interesting point, right? So, uh, so for for example, as as we learn in our Kisar Shochanora class, when we are learning about the, um, the laws of um, Zimun, right? So we say we, uh, we, we Zimun is invitation. So we say this invitation with Hashem's name only when you have ten people, right? Uh, you, you 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 repeat Shmona Esra when you only have uh, ten people. You say Borhu only ten people. Read Torah only ten people. You mention the name of Hashem. So it's uh, ten people. So basically. Uh, Hashem, in some sense, he's uh, a Shina put this person on a ban, so you cannot uh, like, match with, uh, with the three people. You have to like, at least give the, the, the group of people that uh, that Shina can come down to. So it says Nidarim, Talmud Nidarim 7a, 
say that this halacha applies even when uh, the person uh, who dreamt um, uh, who dreamt that he was released from the ban. Okay, so he he had a, a second dream that he was released. So we we just ignored that dream, uh, the, the second part, and he has to be released by uh, people actually here. Okay, continue. If he cannot find such a people in his immediate surroundings, he must join a parasa in search for them. So what is a parasa? Approximately four kilometers uh, in a contemporary measure. For four kilometers, I'm not sure, it's like two, two and a half miles, almost three miles. I don't know, two and a half plus minus. Okay, continue. Mm. 60. Okay, continue. Uh, if can uh, if he cannot find these people within this distance, the band can be released even by ten people who study Mishnah, <laughs> lesser uh, rank of study. So, so when uh, when you, when you study Talmud, you go deep, deep, in, deep, deep inside. You see the logic and this and that, right? But when, when you study Mishnah, is not. Um, uh, I mean, I, I have a class, I have two, two classes, right? two groups where, when we study Mishnah. So, but when we study Mishnah, it's not, not what they meant, right? So when, when we study Mishnah, we study with a commentary, we go the inside and this commentary, this uh, great rabbi, <laughs> Rabbi Kehati Zatzal, so he went to the Talmud, he gave us the bottom line, what the Talmud says, this and that, so it, it's a different, uh, different study. You know but in, when, when they say Mishnah, it's like uh, they just repeat uh, this Mishnah and many, many times they do not know what, what it says. What, what, what does it mean? Many times. Or it's like simple understanding. Okay, so it's uh, it's like lower level from uh, from the reading of the, uh, from the study of the Talmud. If he cannot find such people, uh, the band can, uh, can be released, even by they, then people who know how to read the Torah. So from, so, so just so we know, so we understand. To to read from from the Sefer Torah, you you must know. If if you do not know the words, you would not know how to pronounce it. Guaranteed. If he cannot find the person, such people, the band can be released by ten people, even though they do not know how to read the Torah. Commentary. For the divine presence rests among the group of the ten Jews, regardless of their level of learning. So if they are not uh, not against Hashem, if they uh, if they show a Shabbos and they do not do, do like a big sins for which we cannot count them uh, as a part of the Minyan, for example, if he says that Hashem does not punish. So if he says, yeah, no, he's good God, he's like uh, almost like uh, these uh, people make him look like a Santa Claus. So he does not punish, it's evil Satan punish, or God is all good. So this person we cannot uh, count as a part of the Minyan. So we're talking about simple people, especially in olden days, this uh, like uh, previous generations, like uh, they, they, they did not know much, they were God-fearing people. Right, so if, if uh, you tell them this halacha, they will go, whoa, that's halacha. From then on, they're never going to... Uh, to, to do any anything uh, what what you told me not to do you understand so these people are kosher people okay continue if he cannot find 10 people in his place the band can be released by three ordinary people so i mean again the same uh, idea we're trying to help person commentary uh as um as is normal band so now we go like we, we have no choice, right? So we, we, we're going to treat it as a normal band. Normal band, as mentioned, Halacha 7. The Shaila is Dva, um, the, Rab, the Rav Achai Gaon explained that even though the three people do not have the effect of 10, they are able to draw divine, um, down divine mercy. So the, not not the Shina, but at least divine mercy. And uh, we're we learning from, uh, again, from, uh, from the laws of Zimun. Right when when we we need a minimum three people to to, to say the, this formula of blessing Hashem. Okay, number sixty-three. Okay, so next halacha number thirteen. Whenever a ban of ostracism is imposed uh, in person's presence, it should be only lifted in his presence. Right, so which is. Uh, which is makes sense, like uh, like uh, the, the, this person in in some sense. It it, it, it 
it is his fault i agree but in some sense he was humiliated publicly so now we want to clarify him also, also publicly okay he then he was a rasha now he changed his behavior we want to praise him and uh, and say hazaka uh, baruch you did the, the right thing 64 commentary uh that was my personal commentary uh, the comment in Nadarim 7b, Rabbeinu Asher, explains that this gesture made as a token of respect for a person who was ostracized, right? So we respect him. Since the shame of ostracism was imposed upon him in his presence, shame, okay, as a courtesy, so as a courtesy, the ban was also lifted in his presence. Okay, almost, as we said, but very close, Baruch Hashem. Note that Rabbeinu Nisim offers different explanation. After the fact, when Ben issued in a person's presence, it lifted outside his presence, the person's uh, released from the band. So, I mean, we, we, we're trying to, uh, to help the person. So, as a token of courtesy, as we said, like uh, since it, he was uh, humiliated uh, publicly, so we want to fix it for him. Right, if if he's not there, so anyway, he would be happier to be removed from from the band, but uh, stay uh, under the band and come to court like two days later. Okay, continue. If it was issued outside of his presence, it may be lifted in his presence or outside of his presence. Uh, commentary: There is no a pref a preference in either alternative. Okay, whatever you want. Uh, there is no fixed amount of time between the. Uh, issuance of the ban and release so first we said it's uh, 30 days but now uh, like he, he can stay on this uh, for a very long time so let's see 66 not halacha 6 which implies the standard span of ban uh, of what's the same 30 days right we said before the Hagahot Maimanit explained that the latter figure uh, refers to the minimum length of the ban imposed on one who embarrasses color However, a ban and spawns uh, for other reasons can be lifted immediately. So very interesting. So uh, according to this comment, if uh, for a scholar, minimum 30 days. Other people, as we said before, right immediately, if he changed his behavior next morning, so uh, why should he be on the ban? As stated in this halacha, nevertheless, the other... One second. The other commentaries note that Rambam himself does not explicitly makes such a different uh, differentiation and hence it is not accepted so i mean in uh, not or a scholar but uh, for everybody minimum 30 days but uh, if he change it could be earlier 65. there is no fixed amount of time between the insurance and ban of and his release uh, well, yeah we said that instead one may issue a ban and lift it immediately if the person placed under the ban improves his behavior. So I say, oh, whoa, 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 I'm going to pay back. Oh, I was wrong. I apologize. I accept. I'm going to pay back whatever I own this person. No problem. He's released. A commentary. The latter issue, the, the, the latter clause is not mentioned in the Darim, uh, the source of this halacha. However, all commentaries agree that this is explanatory and understandable addition. Okay, so some things, so just to remind us, some things uh, Rambam uh, said, uh, uh, it seems to me. So when, when he st starts with, it seems to me, so our sages explained, he did not have like um, the source, like direct source of the Torah, like in his mind, but uh, but but from all of his experience, from uh, he, like from uh, from learning, he would say that uh, he would think that what that would be the halacha. Okay, continue. Any questions so far on what we said? <clears throat> okay, just one second, let me check time quickly. 48 minutes. Okay, we're going to finish, no worries. Um, so continue. However, if the court uh, sees fit for the individual to remain under the ban for, for a number of years, they may extend the ban according to his wickedness. So it's very interesting, number of years, commentary, 68, Moet Katan, 16a, 16b, 16a, mentioned how ban of forcism was maintained for three years. I mean, uh, 
the person it's it's up to the person it's not up to up to the court so if he changed his behavior that's it as we said even momentarily like a, a moment later we can release the ban right maybe extend the ban according to his wickedness 69 even if he uh, if the punishment is not extended to excommunication as mentioned um, uh, as mentioned in halacha 6 okay continue similar if he, if uh, if it is fit the court is entitled to excommunicate a person at the uh, outset or excommunicate anyone who eats drinks or stands within the four cubits uh, of a person who has been ostracized so now we're going to to go like a uh, deeper into this uh, ostracism so this guy is on a ban but uh, the ban is uh, as we said to apply the, per, the 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 pressure on him right so if so one more time, if uh, similarly, if uh, it is it is C feet, the court is uh, entitled to excommunicate a person at the outset. What does it mean? Without issuing a ban of ostracism beforehand, right? There is no warning, no ban of ostracism. Why? Or excommunicate anyone who eats, drinks, or stands within the four cubits of a person who has been ostracized. So we try to apply uh, like a pressure on this guy so if you're going to come uh, to him uh, and dine with him and sit, sit around drink drink coffee and chat with him so how how he's uh, how he is losing out right so the, these people who who, who come to, to that person right and uh, in, in the next in the proximity of four for amos for amos it's like seven uh, seven and a half feet approximately plus minus if somebody going in meters, it's uh, less than two meters. Okay. So commentary. Uh, this person violated the ban of ostracism. Even more serious punishment may be imposed upon him. Right. Nevertheless, there is uh, no requirement that the punishment be imposed for this reason. So, I mean, if they want to, to, to punish people who come close to that person, they, they can, basically. Continue. This power is granted to cause the banned person hardship so we want to apply pressure some hardship uh, and thus create a fence around the Torah so that it will not be violated by the sinners that's uh, like they, they give us uh, the underlying reason right so that's why the, the, the sages were empowered to add these halachas mm. continue even though the Torah scholar may place a person under the ban of ostracism to prevent his honor, to preserve his honor, it is not praiseworthy for a scholar to accustom himself to this practice. So even though he's uh, he's allowed to do it, but right as, as as we said before, we explained before, don't do it. So uh, just keep. Uh, uh, so I, I heard a few times uh, somebody ask uh, uh, for, for, um, forgiveness of Rabbi Rubenschlitt, and he forgave like. Pfft. He gave such a blessing to this person, so um, I'm sure he never cursed this person. Or like, you understand? That's that's the proper scholar. Instead, he should turn to his ears from the words of the common people and not to pay attention to them. As Shlomo said in his wisdom in Kahala 721, also do not pay heed to all the words uh, that are spoken. So, but but people say, yeah, he he, he insulted you. He's the, this, he's that. So it's proper for a scholar, like uh, for for all of these so uh, so called friends, just keep them quiet. But don't listen to them. Do what Torah says. Uh, commentary. Uh, the verse continues. Uh, for often our hearts, our heart knows that you have uh, also cursed others. Right, so you you're not you're not better than than that person, right? So your heart knows that you also curse others. Uh, one should realize how a person's statements are often made in anger without any um, serious intent. So somebody insulted you, but he did not mean to. So somebody I don't know you, especially uh, even in people in your own family, you you don't know what's going on with your wife, you don't know what's going on with your husband. I don't know, like uh, whatever. So things going on. So some sometimes they answer a little rudely. So don't uh, don't uh, don't uh, don't take revenge. Okay, just let it go. Continue. This was the practice of the pious of early generations. So don't take revenge. 
they would hear their shame and not answer. So that's actually must be a practice of all of us. So somebody, as we said before, humiliate us, don't answer. What does it say? It says in Talmud Yoma 23a, states, those who are insulted do not insult others, who hear their shame and do not respond, who serve God out of love, concerning them, the, it says in Judges 5.3, and those that love him, Hashem, will be as a son uh, that it comes out in its mind. That's how Hashem sees this person who, who do, 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 is being insulted and does not respond. And we've actually learned in different class. So it says uh, a long time ago, see Hilchot Diot 2 3, where the quotes explain in details, right? Not to retaliate. 75. Continue. Furthermore, they would pardon and forgive a person who insulted them. As we just said. Commentary Migla 28a relates that before retiring at night, Nehunya and uh, Nehunya ben Hakana and Marzutra for, uh, would forgive anyone who wronged them. Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, so it's uh, uh, um, uh, I think it's uh, Balatanya, uh, incorporated a declaration to that effect in the test of Kriya Shema Alamita. And that's what we, we actually said, uh, and it's proper for, we didn't get to, to, to the women's part in it, I think, or we spoke about it. So it's proper, it's proper for men and for women to, to say this part uh, like before you go into to bed, so that I, I forgive a, a, everyone who insulted me in this life and that life was told for me. Okay, I don't, I don't need this trouble, so Hashem, I forgive them. Okay. That's the proper way uh, of, of a Jew retiring for the night. Continue. The great sages would uh, take pride in their uh, uh, pleasant deeds, right? Um, related that they never issued a ban of ostracism, excommunication to protect their honor. So Hashem's honor, yes, when somebody is uh, going against Hashem, when somebody is uh, uh, like beating up his wife, yeah, you have to put this person on the ban. There is no question about it, but uh, for for your own, own honor, yeah, Mr. Sage, absolutely, that's a thing to be proud of. Right? They humiliate me. I did not respond. Commentary: The Yerushalayim Talmud Moed Katan Trivan relates that Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi related that he had never issued a ban of ostracism. Like people, of course, they insulted him, but he did not, uh, even though he had this right. This is the path of the sages, which is worthy of being followed for all of us. As I always say, somebody insulted, do not answer and forgive that person. Um, continue. We're almost done. When does a buff apply? When a person uh, spurned and or embarrassed a scholar in private. Commentary. There is a few that the 10 Jews witnessed the or inform about the incident. So inform and witness, it's the same thing. Okay. Uh, so meaning, well, how, how's that play role, like pra pra practical role? So if uh, it says that if, if somebody is uh, uh, Michal Shabbos Bifaresia, so, so what's it mean Michal Shabbos Bifaresia? And clowns, of course, they take take out of the context things and they, uh, they uh, manipulate. So Bifaresia meaning in public. So in public, yeah, if, if somebody like smoking uh, uh, and uh, was surrounded by 10, ten Shomer Shabbos Jews, yeah, that's for them, it's Bifarese. Which is not true. We just said that uh, Bifarese, if they know about incident, if 10 different people, I saw this guy making barbecue and somebody else saw him, like on this day, on that, on different days, some other people saw him driving, so other people know, so they, they saw him. So that's, uh, that's Bifarese, that, that 10 people. It's very interesting. Continue. However, if one uh, spurns or, um, uh, or embarrasses a scholar in public, it is forbidden for a scholar to forgo his honor. So that's uh, very difficult, right? Why? Because the scholar is uh, his representative of Hashem. They insulted Hashem. It's not his personal honor. Uh, commentary. Uh, although Kiddushin 33b states that the, uh, that the Torah scholar is entitled to forgo his honor. This refers only to uh, instances when he um, when he releases person from obligation to show he, uh, him token of respect. However, he does not have a right to forgive public display 
uh, of disrespect toward him, right? As we said in chapter 5, Halakha 11, right? So we said that. Indeed, so it's like in, the, in this Halakha, it's a long color, but it's like he's summarizing a little bit. Uh, in, uh, indeed, if he does not, uh, if he does so, he is punished. So if if this uh, taller skull was uh, was uh, was insulted publicly and he he is quiet and he forgive, right? Uh, so he is punished because um, because the disrespect of the Torah is involved. So one more time, it's not him; it's his Torah knowledge. Uh, this uh, person insult him. Okay, who, who is he? He's a he's a flesh of um, blood, right? But but he's a he's a representative of the Torah. Like Holy Torah, so Torah is Hashem. So they insult the Torah, not him. Really? Uh, so and, uh, and it says a uh, uh, disrespect of the Torah and commentary say, and not his personal honor, as we explained, is involved. Commentary: If people see that the Torah scholars can be treated with disrespect, they will lose um, deference. For the uh, for the totality of the Torah and mitzvahs. So if if he's a he's a clown rabbi, so he's a, he's a, the body body. You can call him by, by by the first name, and he sleeps in your house. He sleeps in uh, in uh, their house, and you go barbecue together, this together. You go to the to the beach together. So okay, so there is no respect to such a person, right? So and uh, not only to such a person, but also to 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 the Torah scholar. He gives you uh, he tells you. He tells you the halacha is like that. Okay, he tells me halacha like that. My my friend uh, Steve tells me halacha is different. Okay, okay. So continue. Instead, he uh, he should seek vengeance. So this Torah scholar and carry enmity uh, over the matter like a snake. So that's that's halacha, right? Snake until the offender requires to uh, request to be pardoned until that person asks for forgiveness. Eighty-two commentary. Uh, Talmud Yoma, not sure where, okay, so it states uh, that any scholar who does not seek vengeance and carry enmity is like a, like, like a snake, is not genuine scholar. So people would say, okay, I'm not a genuine scholar, but uh, some, some are very known uh, scholars, so they, they have no, no right to, to ju just forgive. The comparison to a snake is uh, significant. Based on uh, Kahelis uh, 1011, Arahin 15b explained that the snake does not bite for his own benefit, right? So, uh, snakes usually don't, uh, don't, don't eat whatever they, uh, the word they kill, but merely as a messenger of God. That's very important. Like uh, snakes bite not to, not, not to kill for food, but as messenger for God. When the Torah scholar seeks vengeance, he must have similar intent as a messenger of God, right? Um, he should uh, have no thought of his personal honor and pride. So it's very important. It's because of Hashem, right? Because of Hashem's Torah. Rather, his intent should be to defend the Torah's honor. Uh, where it says, Hanukkah's HaTorah. Continue. Then he should forgive him. So when, when he pushes him so hard that this guy uh, asks for mercy, then he should forgive him. Let me see if the next page. Okay. Commentary. Uh, the Hilkas Teshuva 2.10 relates. Uh, it is forbidden for a person to be cruel and refuse to be appeased. So somebody asks you, offended you, doesn't matter how, he asks you forgiveness, you have for, for, forgive with a full heart. We will learn it in our class Hilkas Teshuva. When a person who uh, wronged him asks for forgiveness, he should forgive him with complete heart and willing spirit. It's not like, uh, like don't, don't show that like, you are for force. Right? Even if he distressed and wronged him very much, he should not seek revenge or bear grudge. And the last sentence says, uh, blessed is the merciful one who grants assistance. So, Hazak, Hazak, Vinay, Hazak. So we finished uh, this, uh, this class on uh, Hilchas Talmud Torah. So congratulations to everybody who participated. So any questions? On any topic, you can ask, go ahead. <clears throat> no questions, thank you very much. Okay, so so then, uh, okay, go, go ahead, go ahead, please go ahead. I'm listening. Sorry. No, no go ahead. Yes, I um, was there uh, with the, uh, the excommunication 
Um, apologize. Could you could you could you speak a little louder? Apologize. Could you speak? I cannot hear you. If can communication what? Say it again, please. With that, with the excommunication, um, would there be any level of exile, or would that have to be something severe for that to happen? Okay, so we we mentioned all of this uh, twenty four things that, that, that a person can do so he can wrong another person he would uh, sell the property to a non-jew and uh, the jewish suffering he's a coin and he keeps only meat to himself all, all, all of the other other things and plus uh, our sages can can create uh, the expression if uh, if they if they feel that it's going to be good for community yes So all all of this, it, it's it's like we we are trying to insult somebody. No, has for We are trying to 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 make sure that the laws of the Torah are, are preserved. So and many times, like people, like um, they take everything like opposite, or they 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 live with their emotions. And I had a class before that, and it was one part when everybody said, "Does not make sense." Does, and people were a little upset with this halacha, <laughs> and I had to explain it. So they, let let me quickly explain it, and then we go to the questions. Continue with the questions. So, so it's from uh, the book is uh, Neshmat Abraham. So it's medical halacha. It's medical class for medical professionals, and and I I I also learn with them, and I ask them questions. Baruch Hashem. So of course I, I don't know the, the terminology, the no procedures. But this um, this part was about uh, writing the documents, legal documents, and it was about adoptive um, uh, a, a child that, that was adopted, right? So a child that was adopted. So the question was: Is he obligated to show the honor to his parents, uh, to, 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 to his uh, the parents, uh, the adoptive parents who adopted him, and uh, if he knows the parents, uh, his uh, biological parents? So it actually applies. Uh, to, to the case of a convert, right? Does is he has obligation? Does he has obligation or she obligation to ask uh, to honor their biological parents? So it, it, the thing is, is I mean, very close. So it says here it's very interesting. So he's not so the, the, this people, this couple, let's say, adopted this uh, child as he was. Let's say I'm just making up case three years old. So he he does not know different life, right? So he knows only only this life, only this parents. So, but he does not have a Torah obligation to respect them, right? But, but as a, any normal person, uh, he has to respect anybody and be appreciated and uh, to have gratitude to a person who did uh, do, uh, who did uh, good to us, right? But if this uh, this uh, biological peop uh, parents show up like after tw twenty years. Of abandoning this person, so he would be would have this uh, Torah obligation to to respect uh, to respect this uh, biological parents. So the this, uh, the, the people start asking like, how is it possible? The, this uh, biological parents they dump him, right? And now they, they come and he must obligate. Uh, he is obligated on a Torah level to to um, uh, uh, to towards the two. To respect them according to, to halacha, but these people who like uh, who sacrificed their life literally for for them, he's not obligated uh, to, to respect them, but he should be appreciative and uh, and uh, stuff like that. So it's it's very interesting, interesting question. So uh, so what I told them, so I to quiet everybody down. So you have to separate in 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 the Judaism. You have to use your um, your um, your intellect and try to push away. As, uh, emotion as far as possible because emotions they come from Eitzhahara. How is it possible? It's not true, it's not this and that. But Hashem, He's a fair judge, and He said, They're your biological parents, you have to respect them. Why? Because it says in the Torah. And when you, when like, I I, I specifically wanted, wanted to, to learn with you guys this uh, introduction to the kosher kitchen because without this introduction, this uh, law, law is like a mechanical, like a, any, even a monkey can do that. So we must know that we keep the Torah, the mitzvah, because Hashem said so, period. 
Okay, there are other explanations, but it's secondary or tertiary, right? The, the main point, Hashem said so. So I have to respect this pen. So I, I, I take my emotions away, put it aside, would they dump me? Let's say I'm not an adopted person, but well, let's say, right? They, uh, but same same as any positive mitzvah that I have, I have a mitzvah to put fill in, positive mitzvah, right? So I have to, I must do it because Hashem said so. Do I understand why? Hashem said so. Same this people, they dump me, this, uh, they were over, they uh, neglected me, that doesn't matter. I have to respect them, not because of them being nice or not nice, but because Hashem said so. But these people, that adoptive uh, people, that adopt my adoptive parents that uh, spent their life to put the, like, uh, to sacrifice everything. So I have to be as appreciative as I would uh, be, well, must be for any other person, right, who did uh, good to me in my life. So, but when your parents are good to you and your biological parents are needless to say, it's a double, uh, like a double appreciation to what they do. First, you must because of, uh, because of uh, uh, this um, Torah obligation. And second, that's, that's what proper way of life to be appreciative. So that's, uh, so after I explained that, so people come down, come down saying it's uh, Baruch Hashem. Because it was a tense in that class, for question. All right, go ahead. Any questions? Go ahead. Yes, please. Okay, can can somebody please read? I can, it's uh, please. Yes. Joshua, just, uh, just a little louder, please. I can hear. How's the status of a person that didn't accept the rebuking of his rabbi, but continues to connect with the students of the rabbi? Should the students of the rabbi continue continuing to rebuke him or just stay away until he does chishva? Okay, so okay, so he's a okay. Let me uh, repeat the case and uh, please, please uh, confirm uh, uh, if if I get get it correctly. So here's the thing: so a person doing something wrong, and as we said, uh, a person, as uh, Rabbi Ruben Schlitter said many times, a person who does not have a rabbi, he's uh, uh, he the person who does not have God. Why? Because he's uh, he's de deciding halacha himself. Nobody is going to rebuke him ever. Nobody is going to tell him what to do. So he's uh, it's like he does not have God. Why? Because uh, Hashem is going to send him all of the message, all of the necessary instruction in life through this rabbi. So he said, I appoint this person. Whatever this it does not have to be the biggest story scholar in the world. I appoint this uh, this person as my rabbi. He cannot appoint a rabbi on, on myself. Right, I have to appoint him as my rabbi, so I subject myself to him, and uh, uh, so and okay, so and he he's the thing. So rabbi uh, rebuke him, and uh, the person said, no, I'm going to do, I'm going to continue in my uh, evil ways. Right. So the the question is, uh, if other students uh, should continue rebuke him, so I would say it depends. It depends. If it's a biblical violation, yeah, we have to all of them have to rebuke. Um, right, because it's biblical, but if it's rabbinical, I would say just leave him alone. So many, many times, many times, and unfortunately in my, uh, in my uh, uh, practice, like in the past, I don't know how many months, like people drive like uh, flies, like they were going like high, like uh, very spiritual, and then they heard something like I, I said, or Rabbi Ruben said, I shared with him like my frustration, whatever they, they, they do not like, they like, go down. Completely. Why? Because of the arrogance. Because of Gava. Because they do not agree. Okay, they found somebody else that said different. Okay, you can find cat on the street. Uh, would uh, say whatever you want to say. Just give him a little piece of uh, no, meat. You understand? So, so, but, uh, but, but the students, yeah, they, they have to apply pressure. But it, it must be pressure since uh, many people are so arrogant. They're going to drop everything. So it's better. So you can do more with the honey, but then uh, with, with, with a stick. Meaning that, that we try to, to like, I, I at least try when I rebuke anybody and I rebuke 
people, right? So I try to, to show that I'm your friend. I, I want to do on, on the best for you. And that's why I'm, I'm doing it to you. Like, like a doctor, like doctor, like surgeon, he would cut the per people in pieces. Why? To, to save his life. That's, uh, that's uh, the, the way I explain. That's why, what I do. You, 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 and I can tell to anybody, I, you, you're not paying me any money. Anything. I'm not getting any anything from anybody. Is if uh, if uh, even from for Bizrat Hashem, I only invest my personal money in Bizrat Hashem. You, you, you understand? So what, what is my my thing? I, I'm trying to help you. That's uh, my only reason that I'm doing what I'm, I'm doing. So if but if person is continue be arrogant and uh, insist on his way, so what, what can we do? You understand? But he's going to pay for this arrogance, unfortunately. So we're trying to to stop a person from falling. And uh, if you're a fellow student of that person, you have to, you, yeah, you must try to, like, to, to show that I'm with you, but you must submit yourself not to rabbi. So we, we respect rabbi and we, we, we uh, like put somebody as a rabbi on, on us because he's a messenger of Hashem. He tells me what, what the Torah is, is telling me. It's not my personal opinion. Not, I, I don't care about his personal opinion. I care about the opinion of the Torah. I didn't get to it, or maybe I misunderstood, and uh, I ca can be, I cannot be objective in my case. But he can be objective, and he knows the Torah, so it's uh, whatever he says. It's like Moshe Rabbeinu said. You understand? So that's um, that's the thing. So that we have to we must uh, respect rabbis, and from my 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 experience, everybody who went against rabbis from uh, against Rabbi Rubin Shlita. No, not, not against, but did not listen to his advice, so they they suffered till this day. Understand? So unfortunately, and uh, I have a pity, and I pray, and uh, I do whatever I can, but uh, people are stubborn, unfortunately. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, Rabbi. Uh, Please. Shalom. shalom. One of the questions I have is about the honor. Uh, what happens if your biological father is an atheist and then your the one that raised you is an idol worshiper? Do you still honor one of them or no? Okay, so so okay, yeah, that that's exactly connect. I apologize. So I, I I meant to draw the to draw the, the the connection, but I did not. So okay, so first we said so if it's a biological parents, so if it's not Jew, that's a different. So let, let me finish with a Jew. So he could be the biggest the biggest atheist. He would be like a, like a, so atheist. So just stay away from him. But if he if you can help him and it it's not against the Torah, he asks you to go to to the grocery to or to to laundry to pick up his his laundry bag. So you must do it absolutely. Yeah, but uh, that that's one thing. If he's a Jew, right? Because the halacha, uh, it's it's between the choose. But if somebody is converts, so his biological father is not his father, right? He's not his father. So does he uh, is he uh, does he obligate to, to uh, respect him according to the Torah? Absolutely not. But he must uh, respect him as a person uh, who raised him. You understand? So two different things. So as as somebody would help you to find a job, somebody you I'm not talking about you. Somebody like right? somebody would. I have a person, young young fellow, and I found out I got involved in a case. So he, he lost his job, he has a back problem, this problem, whatever. Uh, and his friends, three friends or four friends, they were paying for his apartment. He, they were paying for, paying for his car insurance. They would buy him grocery. He was depressed, this and that. So, and, uh, and not to be appreciative, it's like, uh, it's not normal, it's not human. After all, all the, 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 these uh, people did to him. And uh, what, how did it happen? Uh, what, what happened And then? He cursed them out. Like, unfortunately, I'm very, very fortunate I talked to two of them. And, uh, but uh, we have to have appreciation. So if this person, this father, mother, whatever, if they're going against God, so you have to distance yourself. So, but if they're normal, like a normal uh, secular people, some no, normal non-Jews, non okay, they, I have uh, may, many neighbors like that, normal. Just, I mean, uh, they they not for God, not against God. They, they care about the weather, about... Uh, the television about the show about the election okay so that there, there is no problem you can uh, you can visit them you have to you you can show that uh, things of respect so if and even if they they, they idol worshiper but they're not in your face so you still owe them respect if you live closer 
But I would say, just say that there is a trick. So you have to respect even your Jewish father, right? Only if you if you live closer, and uh, it, since it's one of the positive mitzvahs, right? So uh, if you're busy with one mitzvah, you're not obligated to do another mitzvah, positive. So if I live uh, in another state, right, and I'm busy, I'm learning long Torah, I have to provide for my family, I have to this, I have to that. So I don't, I'm not obligated to go visit my parents, period, right? Because it's another mitzvah, and I'm busy with another. I'm not obligated to to study, like to 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 skip even one class, whatever we have, even one class to skip to go to visit my parents. Absolutely not. I have class. That's it. So that. Uh, but if a person goes against Hashem, then you distance for sure. But if you live like uh, not too far, and you can show the some tokens of appreciation, that's a must. Because uh, you, people are people, and people are saying, yeah, Louis, he was a normal uh, like us, yeah, was good, right? And now he decided to be a Jew, the holy Jews, and look, look at this, he does not want to even talk to us. So you, you understand? So if you're far away, no, nobody's going to blame you. But if you're a few blocks away and you never visit your uh, biological parents, uh, that's, uh, that's the problem. I mean, right? So that's, that's the thing. Okay, go ahead. Any other questions? Okay, so no, no question, no problem. So we stop here. Bezrat Hashem. So, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, please. Rabbi, so the the point of the ban is to help the person that's committing a transgression to be able to do tshuva. Yes, one hundred percent. You see, in, in Judaism, we, we, we're not like in a, in, a, in a Western society or any society, right? Just uh, like to, uh, to, to, to put a person in prison. So what, what he uh, is going to, to learn, this, this person with, with the back with, who, who, who is dis, uh, depressed, who, who, who did this uh, the, the curse out his friends. So he's, he's now in a, in a prison, just, just so we know. So I pray for his uh, recovery and uh, I talk to his lawyer, try, try to get the guy out, but it's uh, like this prison. I, I hope he's not going to go to prison. He he was no normal boy until I hope, I hope it's not going to happen. Hashem should have mercy on him. But if it's going to happen, how, how is it going to change him? He's going to be a, 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 a around these criminals who who is going to all day long they share the criminal stories and how to to make a big buck and stuff like that. So if he, when he's going to come from prison, that's for sure. I'm not talking about him. Hopefully, but another person, another person would come to prison. He's going to be even more criminal than he went to, right? But in Judaism, all of these punishments, punishment, like in the double quotes, like educational punishment. So if we cannot uh, fix the person, there is a king. So the, 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 the person still five times. We went to the king, uh, your, your majesty, lost case. So he said, lost case, chop his head off. That's it. End of the story. Um, so that's it. So all of the, uh, so this, all of the pressure, it's, for him. So if he does the show, there is no punishment in the next world. So we're trying to cleanse ourselves in this world as much as possible. So the next world would be like uh, on only on only good uh, good good stuff. All of these bad things, as we said, all of these curses, all of this and bad, all of this bad, it's subject subject to the sure. If any of us do the sure, it's not applicable. Not applicable. Absolutely not. So a person can go can go to Ganadin almost straight. Maybe there's some some things that we did not do to show properly. Okay, you're going to gain on for some time, but that's it. After a short period of time, you go to Ganadin and enjoy forever. So it's very proper, right, to do to show and change our ways, work on our characters. One more time in my like past three, four, five months, like this arrogant thing it's like so obvious i'm not sure it's something in the air in the water so people drop everything because of the arrogance unfortunately because i don't know why even though we wish only bad for them and uh in the two cases i involve uh rabbi ruin like maybe I, I was i was the going crazy maybe i and he said exactly as i said because it's Torah. it's not like we're making things up we're trying to help save people and some people do not want to be safe they want to go the uh, wicked way, unfortunately. Okay. Any other question? Questions? 
Okay, so we stop here then. So next uh, next week we're going to start uh, start new a uh, new series. It's going to be Shmana Prakim. So it's uh, uh, it's very interesting. All, also Rambam. So it's before the uh, he before he did the uh, commentary of Perkyovas. He did this. It's very very the details. Uh, the thirteen thirteen principles of faith the, the, that we say uh, like every morning. So, so I, I had a different idea in mind, but Rabbi Rubin said, no, you have to learn this first and then uh, other things. So it's uh, with uh, Rabbi Rubin's Shlita's blessing, we're going to learn that book. Okay, good night. Until tomorrow, tomorrow is Kosher Kitchen. Thank you. Bye-bye.